Hello and welcome to the second episode of creating your own SEO analyzer using Python, beautiful soup and request library. So in this episode, I'm going to get the keywords of my web page of my blog. That is this article that I have written, what is syntax and programming and linguistics. And I'm going to see which keywords have been used the most, which words actually have been used the most. And those will be the keywords of my blog. But what is the importance of keywords? There is this article on Yoast.com. Yoast is a very nice, uh, very good uh, WordPress plugin for SEO. So if you go to this page, they have explained the importance of keywords and how to use it and where to use it. So it should be present in page title, uh, subheadings in, in the introduction, in image alt text, meta description, and in the URL slug. That is like this part of your URL. So for me, for example, I was aiming for the word syntax and programming. You can see it exists in the URL slug syntax programming. It exists also here in the title of my website, here as well in the title of the blog, and we'll see if I have used enough syntax and linguistics or programming in the body of my article as well. So I'm just going to review what I did in the first episode and we'll get to the keywords. So. In the first episode, uh, well, there are some things that I've changed just actually a bit, only this one. So I have created a function called SEO analysis, which takes this parameter URL. And these are the things that I did yesterday. Well, the first episode. So I'm going to send a request to get the URL content like this. Then we're going to parse the HTML of the content using a beautiful soup. Then I've created three lists, bad, good keywords. So I'm gonna add whatever is missing to the bad, whatever is present to the good, and I will add things with keywords later. Then I've grabbed the title like this. If it exists, add it to the good. If it doesn't, add it to the bad, that it doesn't. Then I grab the meta description, I grab the headings, and especially H1 should be present. And I also grab the images without the alt attribute and then I printed the results. So to use this function, I just call it here and I give it this argument, this web page, my own, the page uh, of the blog. And you can see I get title exists, meta description exists and all that. But these are the bad thing, no alt attribute for this image, for instance, that I should correct. Okay, now we are going to use NLTK for analyzing the keywords and the most frequent keywords in this blog post. So I'm importing these. If you're using your ID on your local machine, you need to install, pip install them. But I've imported an LTK library, which is for natural language processing. Then I've imported the word tokenize from an LTK tokenize to get the specific tokens and words from a text. If you don't know what a token is, a token refers to like a single meaningful part. That is if with one token, you with another token. And let's see if there is like an apostrophe S, for example, I can't find any here. That would also be a token. So it's not just words, but also some characters and all that. They are called tokens. So I'm going to use uh, an LTK to, to do that, to get the tokens, put them inside the text. Then I've also downloaded the stop words, a list of stop words, and stop words are words which are not that helpful in analyzing a text. For example, the word like the is not that meaningful uh, when it comes to an analysis or is or in. These are not that meaningful, so they are called stop words. And then I've just also downloaded the punct module, which is for tokenizing sentences. You don't need to know what these do, but you just maybe need to uh, download them anyways. Now that I have these, 
I'm going to start using them. So I, in the end, I will put them all inside this function, but for now, I just wanna show you how it works uh, besides the function. So what I'm gonna do, let me see. Let's just actually grab these, okay, and put them here. So this one, okay. So now, here I'm sending a request to this URL, the URL of my website, to grab the text of it, and then I'm going to parse it, the HTML of that. Okay, that is what we did before. It's fine for now. Now, what I want is this soup, as we saw in the first episode, includes all the JavaScript, HTML, CS, and all that. What I want is only the body of that source code. So if I inspect this, you can see here, here we have this, but I do not want any of these up to the body tag because they're not useful for me anyways. So I want to check the body of the text. That is why I am going to go inside the soup. Let's grab a variable called bud for this body. And let's go inside the soup and find the body tag. And let's grab the text inside it. Otherwise you would just get all the div and um, h1 and h2 as well. So I just want the text. Now if I uh, print the body, so as you can see, now I get a string with all the content of that blog. And I also have these kind of menu items as well, but it's fine, they're not gonna do any harm if they are here. Okay, so now we have the body. I have to tokenize it now, that, I, that is, I have to turn it into words or meaningful, let's say, uh, meaningful chunks. So now I'm gonna create a um, list called words. So I want to add all the separate words inside this list. So what I can do is I can use list comprehension here. Uh, yeah, let's use list comprehension actually. Okay, so I'm gonna say return i for i in in a word tokenize. I'm gonna explain it now, but so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the word tokenize that we imported up there from an LTK here. I'm gonna use this one. And I'm gonna say, get the bud, all this, tokenize it, and then get every token of it, which is I, and put it inside a list. Now, the, the next thing I wanna do is actually lowercase all of them, because for example, linguistics, you can see is with uppercase here and also syntax here, but then you can see that in, in the next parts, it is lowercase. So I'm gonna lowercase everything, so I would say, that i that you return, first lower it and then return it. Now I'm gonna run this and let's see what the first, let's say, I don't know, 10, oops, the first 10 words are. Skip to, this is one word, YouTube. So these are the first 10. So as you can see, I have two, for example, and is and what. These are not very meaningful for my analysis and keywords. So I'm gonna get rid of these. These are stop words. So how can I get rid of those? Well, let's create another variable called SW for stop words. And we are going to grab all these stop words that we just imported, that we downloaded actually. So I'm gonna say SW equals NLTK dot and I'm go inside the corpus of an LTK, look for stop words that we just downloaded, and specifically for the words of English. So now SW is a list of all English stop words. And words is a list of all the words in my website. So I'm gonna go inside every word here, inside this word list, and check if that word is inside this stop word list. If it is, just exclude it. 
So let's create another list called new words. And I would say that for I in words, that is for every word in my website words, right? Check if that word, which is I, is not in, should not be in SW, that is stop words. So if that word is not in this list of stop words, and that word dot is alpha, well, that is actually a word, not a number or punctuation or a character. So two conditions, that word in my website should not, like here, should not be in the stop words and should be also a word, not a character or something. If that is the case, perfect. Add it to new words by this method. Add that I to new words. Okay, great. Now let's see what this new word, new words has the first 10 words. You can see I don't have to and what and is, you see? So I have got rid of the stop words. Perfect, so I have just content meaningful words there. Now that I have these, I'm going to look for the frequency, right? Which words are the most frequent among these? If I hadn't gotten rid of the uh, uh, is, then of course those will be would be uh, the most frequent. But now I only have content meaningful words. So I would say now for frequency, let's just have a frequency kind of variable. And I'm going to use NLTK library. And this special frec this means frequency distribution, and I'm gonna pass in the new words list. So I'm gonna check the frequency distribution of the words in the new words list. So if I do this, it doesn't work, you know, uh, because you can see that it's just like this, but what I wanna do is I wanna check only the first 10 words of this. So I will say now print a frec the frequency dot oops not like that frec dot most common let's see if it gives us yes most common the first ten common words and now I have a list syntax has been used twenty times language fifteen sentence linguistics programming. Perfect, so now you can see the first 10 common words in my article. And as you can see, syntax is the highest. So that is perfect because I also have it here inside the title. Then linguistics and programming. So these three are actually the keywords I would like to emphasize. And I haven't just used it packed, you know, the article with the word syntax. I have I had a very normal use of the word whenever it was necessary. So that is another thing. Okay, now that we've done this, I'm gonna put these inside my function. So right here, I'm gonna say, uh, grab the keywords, key, keywords. Okay, now this one, then we also got the lowercase words. We tokenized them. Then we created a list of English stop words. Then we created a new list of words and checked if those words were inside the um, stop words or not. Then we got the frequency of those words and now we can safely print them here. So I can say something like, well maybe I can, yeah, like this, keywords, like that. And down here, let's say the good, and here, I would say the bad. All right, 
now let's run this okay now we have it and SEO analysis we passed in the article of my website and let's see what we get keywords syntax language blah blah the good title exists the bad no alt for these so now you can pass in the URL of whatever website you want into this function here and it will get you that information I can do this with SEO or I have another post here about web scraping. It's not that elaborate, but anyway, let's just do it. So I'm going to pass it in here and press run keywords web scraping. Okay, that's perfect. Python, beautiful soup. Uh, and yes, so that is great. So I wanted to aim for beautiful soup and web scraping. So they are among the keywords. Title exists. As you can see, meta description exists. Everything is good and the bad is empty. There is no bad thing about that web page. <laughs> okay, that was an SEO analyzer using Python. I hope you really liked it. And I can actually make an, a web app using all we have done here, later using also Streamlit. So please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much for watching and listening.